Welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today, we are going over the most common vasopressors used in the ER. These include epinephrine, norepinephrine, vasopressin, and phenylephrine. Vasopressors are very potent medications, and because we as nurses are often the ones titrating these medications, it's extremely beneficial and important to know more about them. The more you know, the safer you are for your patients and for yourself. So today we will discuss what they are, what effects they have on the body, when they are used, concentrations, and complications. So what are they? Vasopressors are life-saving medications. However, when used incorrectly, they can be very harmful. Depending on which one, they can increase the heart rate, affect heart contractility, help increase blood pressure by constricting blood vessels. Although pressors have different effects, many times in the ER they are used to help increase blood pressure and enhance tissue perfusion. Do you remember receptor sites from back in nursing school? Beta 1 affects the heart, beta 2 the lungs, alpha and V1 affect blood vessels. Super quick, I made a mini book of the topics we've discussed on the channel plus content from future videos like IV tips and what to expect during a cardiac arrest. If it sounds like something that might interest you or perhaps you would like to further support the channel, please check it out on Amazon. The link we provided down below in a pinned comment. Getting back to the video, norepinephrine or levofed is one of the main pressors we use in the ER. It has alpha effects with slight beta 1, so it helps increase blood pressure and ultimately perfusion and gives the heart a little help with contractions. One of the main reasons why it is very useful in the ER is that it can be started peripherally. Of course, preferably with the large bore IV in the AC, and it should only be temporary until a central line is placed. When patients come in very sick, getting a central line may take some time as providers may focus on other things. So if you need a presser and have a good IV access, it, it's okay to start it peripherally. Do ensure that you have an order for this. It's going to be the presser of choice in septic shock. It can also be useful as a, as a first line agent in cardiogenic shock, obstructive shock, and neurogenic shock. The concentration is typically 4 milligrams in 250 mLs. Onset is within two minutes, so when tight training, ensure you give it enough time for the medication to start working. You don't want to stack titrations without letting them first take effect. However, check with your organization or facility, facility to ensure you're following their protocols, especially when it comes down to titration um, and to making dirty levo drips and the start rate and how often you can titrate. If you do make your own drip, use a filter needle if it's a glass ampule and clearly label the bag with the medication, the dose, the date, the time, and the initials. The worst possible thing that could happen is someone accidentally boluses the presser because you did not correctly label the medication as you should have. Now, let's get into epinephrine. It's another important vasopressor we use in the ER. It has beta 1, beta 2, and alpha properties, so it will help with the heart contractility, increase the heart rate, increase the blood pressure, and open up the airways due to bronchodilation. It's the go-to agent when a patient comes in in pulseless, in cardiac arrest, also commonly used in anaphylactic shock, and in shock states associated with the very low heart rate, as it helps increase the heart rate back up. Then, it's also commonly added as a second-line agent vasopressor after levofed has not worked. It can be also given in very small doses, IV push by providers in emergency situations to help stabilize the patient, such as in peri-arrest. Again, remember, it's very, very small doses, and it's only given by the provider, not by you. But it's important for you to be aware that these are options the providers do have, especially in those super critical situations where your patient may arrest, such as in peri-arrest. The concentration of the drip can be 1 milligram in 250 mLs or 4 milligrams in 250 mLs. Onset is within one minute. Of course, again, verify with your facility's protocols for the concentrations and titrations. I actually recommend making yourself a cheat sheet for all of the pressers. You can have it on your notes app on your phone, or if you want, you can make it into a badge wheel for easy access. It's great to have it in emergency, in, in emergency situations. And this badge wheel can not just only have the pressers, it can have all the sedation medications, anything that's titratable and critical care medication so that you are not thinking about it, you just have it there and you can easily access it. 
Now, let's get into vasopressin. It's a V1 agonist, which helps increase the blood pressure. In septic shock, it's typically a second line agent after norepi. So when norepi by itself isn't cutting it, vasopressin gets added on. Vasopressin tends to work better than the other pressors in acidotic patients, and it's sort of thought of to help other pressors work better. A key thing to remember about vasopressin is that you do not titrate it. You start it at a set rate and you leave it alone. You do not titrate it. Typically, it's going to be 0.03 units per minute. It has an onset of approximately up to 15 minutes. Its, its typical concentration is 20 units in 100 mLs or 50 units in 250 mLs. Again, remember that with vasopressin, you start it and you do not titrate it. You just leave it alone. Now, let's get into phenylephrine. It's an alpha agonist, so it only affects blood pressure. It causes potent vasoconstriction and hence an elevation in blood pressure. The thing with phenylephrine is that as a drip in shock state, it's commonly not going to be a first line agent. It's typically added on after others have not worked. However, phenylephrine still has important uses in the ER. Phenylephrine is very useful as a push dose presser for example in the er if a patient has a very low blood pressure but needs to be intubated the provider can give a very small dose to momentarily bring the blood pressure up while the intubation occurs because if no interventions for the blood pressure are done the patient the patient can tank and go downhill very quickly during the intubation its onset is going to be within one minute. Concentrations for the drip can be 20 milligrams in 250 mLs or 50 milligrams in 250 mLs. Note that it shouldn't be used alone in patients who are bradycardic because the body will respond to an increase in blood pressure by further decreasing the heart rate. There are other agents like epinephrine that can be used with bradycardic patients. Now, although vasopressors can be life-saving medications, they also come with complications, especially if used incorrectly. These complications can include ischemia to organs in the periphery, such as ischemia to the heart or even the fingers and toes. This can definitely happen if bolus or even if used per protocol because if the vessels clamp down or constrict too much blood, is not going to flow as well, limiting the blood flow. Also, since pressors can affect the heart, they place patients as an at an increased risk for arrhythmias, and if extravasation occurs, tissue necrosis can also happen. Now, let's get into some quick tips, tips that you should be aware of. Norepinephrine or levofed, as we said, can go peripherally, but ask for a central line as soon as possible. If getting close to maxing one pressor, start asking for another pressor. Keep your blood pressures Q5 minutes to check patient response, especially when starting a presser. You want to make sure that you're keeping track. Is it working? Is it working too well? Or is it not working? And if you start a second presser on any patient, you should be asking for an arterial line to keep a closer eye on the blood pressure. Be cautious of dose titration stacking. Let the medications work. And you want to ensure that you do not let your bags run dry because if your patient has been used to pressures going in and they just immediately stop, they will tank. Again, check compat compatibility. Can the pressures run with each other or do they have to all be on separate lines? Do not titrate vasopressin. Remember that they all suck in acidosis, except vasopressin can work pretty well. Never, ever, ever bolus pressors. Label all of your lines clearly and push those pressures are only given by the providers. Remember that push those pressures are only given by the provider. Unless you are very experienced, let pharmacy or the provider mix these in the, in the emergencies. You do not want to be involved in the mixing of the push dose vasopressors. Let the providers do it. And for sepsis, the common order of vasopressors added is levofed or norepinephrine, then vasopressin, then epinephrine, and then neosinephrine or phenylephrine. Thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate a like and a follow, and if you learned something today and would like to help support the channel, please consider getting the mini book I put together on Amazon. The link will be in a pinned comment below. As always, you should continue nurturing your curiosity and continue learning daily. With that in mind, please watch my other videos, and I've also listed my favorite ER nursing related books in the description text and in the comments as well. So when you get a chance, please check them out. And if you've learned something recently while at work, 
that may be helpful to other new ER nurses, please consider sharing it in the comments so that we can all benefit and help each other out. Thank you. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.